Nope. Nope. Over 10 minutes have passed. There's a lot of 10 minute intervals. Yeah, and this game is always 10 minute intervals. No, just the night novel. I mean, also in the game, there's lots of 10 minute sections in the game. You sure about that? Mm-hmm. The sound of the students leaving <clears throat> the gym had made their way and making their way to the nurse's office rang throughout the hall. Just that Jack had continued to dodge soccer as attacks with their tricky movements. But when Biakia blurted out, Enough already, you irritating pervert! Genocide Jack stopped in her tracks. Oh my my my! Getting chewed up by my spectacle Biakia is making my masochistic side get all tingly! They see the line between sadism and masochism is paper thin, but in my case it's more like a Venn diagram! Words can't express... Blech. Words can explain these hot waves of passion squirming from the top of my head to the tips of my toes! As she rambled incoherently about Biakia, the other students tied her up with a microphone cable from the gym and locked her in her room. <laughs> That's a good solution. Half the students stayed behind to keep an eye on her, while the rest of the left searched the grounds of the school. You know, because it's such a hard place to fucking look. As soon as the door to the nurse's office opened, Kyoko saw a non-functioning Monokuma with a hole in its chest and the remnants of a surveillance camera. Yeah, it's right there. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't just the nurse's office, though. On their way there, the students had seen several destroyed surveillance cameras scat and scattered Monokuma bodies. This was a clear violation of the school regulations, but if Mukuro was allied with Monokuma, those regulations wouldn't apply to her anyway. The Monokuma inside the gym was no longer moving, and the students had lost contact with the hacker, Bashiki Madurai. So the students assumed that Madurai had taken control of a different Monokuma and went after Mukuro on his own. With that in mind, Kyoko turned and looked inside of the nurse's office once again. It was unusually quiet. The beds were empty, but Kyoko could see from, from the bloodstains that someone had been there recently. Motionless voice. <laughs> you do it, Joe. You just threw it off. I was about to start and you burped. And it fucked up my entire mental state of starting that sentence. Do it. Looks like they're already gone. Oh, oh that's Mondo! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they're already gone. Mondo remarked, but as he was about to leave, Kyoko spoke up behind him. I'm going to stay here with Chihiro and search for clues. Huh? Chihiro asked Chihiro, her, her, timid, her timid eyes widening. Clues? Kyoko continued to speak in a calm tone of voice. Yes, there may be some clues in these Monokuma remains. I figured you'd be the best candidate for investigating machinery. Sakura spoke up. But isn't that dangerous? Since Sakura clearly could hold her own in a fight with Mukuro, she had joined the other students in search in the school grounds. Kyoko shook her head and replied. I'm sorry to say this, but if things get out of hand, Chihiro and I would be in your way. I think it's better if we search for clues here instead of doing nothing. Besides, might be able to use Monokuma's parts to detect any radio broadcasts from the outside world. Hmm, you certainly have a point. Understood. We will be exploring this floor for a while. Please shout us out if anything happens. Shout us out? Shout for- Fud up. Fud up. Fud up, you! Sakura left the nurse's office. Is this... I think it's her. How did she destroy a Monokuma like this? That is... That is... That is it's, Chihiro. Er, okay. How did she destroy Monokuma like this? As Chihiro cautiously stood over Monokuma's remains, Kyoko started searching through the room. She zeroed in on one of the beds and began studying it intensely. A moment later, Kyoko was satisfied with what she had found and let out a small sigh before she spoke. <sighs> Chihiro, let me apologize to you in advance. Huh? I dragged you into this gamble of mine, so if anything happens, run out into the hallway and call for help. Well, what does that mean? But instead of answering Chihiro's question, Kyoko started talking to one of the empty beds. Let me say this first. I'm prepared to hear your story. No matter how ridiculous it may sound, I promise not to decide if it's a lie or the truth until after I've listened to it in its entirety. Chihiro looked confused. 
She didn't understand, but failed to admit it all. The ultimate ugh, lowered her eyes and turned to the ultimate programmer to make a request. Jihiro, does your laptop have a voice recording function? And do you have a microphone? I know I don't. Huh? Y yeah. I want you to use that to record everything we're about to hear. But there's no one here. Uh, but there's no one here. As Shihiro wondered to herself, she began connecting Monokuma's parts to her laptop and turned on the recording function. What? Uh, they're going to try to record the last thing that Monokuma had said to to Mukuro. Because, you know, he never actually turned his voice off until he went to the fucking monitor. That's interesting. I'm sure we'll pick up every sound in this room now, said Shihiro nervously. Satisfied, Kyoko nodded and once again started looking to, talking to the empty bed. So, what were you going to do if I told everyone that I'd found Makoto? When she heard Kyoko say that, Shihiro looked back at her and was surprised by what she saw. At that moment, the ultimate programmer was kneeling on the floor next to Monokuma's remains. From the, uh, that position, she was able to see it. Of all the beds in the nurse's office, there was one bed in particular that couldn't be seen from the entrance. Underneath it lay a limp Makoto. A blood pack was hidden next to the floor and slowly providing Makoto with a transfusion. The contents of the blood pack were clear. Rather than blood, it seemed to be some kind of saline solution used in emergency hydration. Though it wouldn't be as effective as an actual blood transfusion, it was enough to keep him from going into shock. Because you don't know what the blood type is. Though that was the extent of Chihiro's medical knowledge. She was already surprised that Makoto had been in a nurse's office this whole time. Not only that, but Kyoko wasn't talking to the bed that Makoto was under, which which sent chills throughout Chihiro's body. However, there was nobody under the bed that Kyoko was facing, but the moment Chihiro noticed that, a voice rang out from underneath it. She's literally under the frame. This is... That's you. As soon as everyone's attention was focused on Makoto... No, this is... Oh, this is Mukuro. Oh, it's Mukuro? I think. Okay, I think. As soon as everyone's attention was focused on Makoto, I was planning to take advantage of that opportunity to take someone hostage. As Chihiro cautiously lowered her head until it was nearly touching the floor, she was able to make out who was talking. Surprisingly, the person hiding under, hiding under there was clinging to the frame of the bed. Like a ninja cling, clinging to the ceiling. Presumably, if someone had glanced into the bed quickly, they wouldn't have noticed anybody was there. Though Chihiro had no idea how the person was able to hide under the bed for so long, she could at least understand that their strength was beyond normal human levels. There was no question that the person hiding under the bed was Mukuro Ikusaba, the 16th student hiding around the school. Watch out for her. But you pretended not to notice. Why? Mukuro's voice was cold as ice, but Kyoko didn't even flinch as she responded. Because I want- That's my voice, you fuck! <coughs> you wanna go back to the line? <laughs> because I wanted to hear your side of the story. I knew you were hiding under that bed. Compared to the others, the, fra the frame was slightly more pronounced. Chihiro tried com comparing the beds to see if this was true, but she couldn't tell the difference at all. Only Kyoko's natural observation skills could let her see something like that. Mukuro seemed to come to a similar conclusion, and appeared from under the bed without making a sound. Her face was stoic and cold. Compared to the bomb inside Monokuma, Chihiro thought she was even more terrifying. However, Mukuro ignored Chihiro and shifted her gaze at Kyoko. She leaned against a wall and let her arms fall to her sides as she threw out the other question. Another question. Why do you want to hear what I have to say? Kyoko thought about this simple question for a while, as if she were searching for within her own heart for the answer. If I have to provide an answer, it's because I wish to remain neutral. Kyoko quietly looked down. I am currently missing most of my memories. I don't know who I am or what talent I had to be accepted into this school. She could hear Chihiro gasp behind her, but Kyogo didn't mind and continued. Even so, I believe I should listen to what you have to say. 
Regardless of whether you're good or evil, I must hear all the facts in order to know the truth. Good and evil do not matter. I'll come to a conclusion based on what I see and hear. I think that's the methodology that's been instilled into me. I see. I completely forgot you were like that, Kyoko. But before I listen to what you have to say, I'd like you to answer one question first. What is it? Mugro's reply was completely emotionless. Kyoko presented her question as if she were asking it of herself as well. What was my talent that allowed me to attend this academy? The answer to that question was simple. Kyoko, you're the ultimate detective. That answer marked a turning point for both girls. Thank you. I have a better understanding of the situation now. Kyoko slowly raised her head and presented a theory. If my memory loss wasn't just a coincidence, then you, know your group, has the ability to erase people's memories. With that in mind, if we take into consideration the situation that unfolded in the gym earlier, I can only come to one possibility. Possibility? Yes. What you said to be- oh. What you said to Byakuya when he thought you were taking Toko hostage. You claimed that we were met two years ago. It's possible that might actually be true. The fact that Makoto called out Mukuro's name. The things that Mukuro confirmed and denied. Genocide Joe's outlandish claims. These key fact- Oh, this is narration. <laughs> I thought it was good. I was waiting for you to figure that out. I noticed that from the moment that there wasn't any fucking Alright, continue your quotes. narrator job. The fact that Makoto called out Mukuro's name. The fact that Mukuro denied and confirmed. Confirmed and denied. Genocide's Jax and the- And the- Outlandish claims, these key factors that Kyoko noted using her special observation skills were converging in her mind to form one answer. It's possible that Byakuya and Toko's memories were also erased, like mine, but I don't think their circumstances are quite the same as mine. But if our memories can be controlled so freely, it calls into question whether the day Monokuma appeared was really the same day we entered the academy. Like you said, it's possible that we've known Toko F Fukawa for the last two years. What do you mean? What do you mean? Chihiro <laughs> cried out. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't sexual. It was almost. No, because that would be, what do you mean? <laughs> that was so much, so necessary. Get... Chihiro cried, still working on the parts connected her lap deck. That's... <laughs> Still working on connecting her laptop to the Monokuma's parts. <laughs> Still working on her parts, huh? <laughs> oh, God. Mm. 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 She has a huge penis. Kyoko continued. I'm not wrong. Kyoko continued. I, you know it's huge. I know it's a penis. Spoilers for the first game. Spoilers for the first game. You don't know if it's big, though. I don't, but I'm just going to take a wild guess and assume she has a giant penis. And where's her skirt? Yes. It's very hard to hide her giant penis. <laughs> anyway, Kyoko continued speaking to both Chihiro and Amukuro. Wait, is this Chihiro or Kyoko? Kyoko continued okay. speaking I, to both Chihiro you said, and Mukuro. You said Chihiro continued speaking to both <laughs> Mukuro and Kyoko, and I was confused. I did not say Mu- I said Kyoko first. We thought we were knocked unconscious with sleeping gas the moment we arrived at this school. But it's possible we were simply made to think that that's what happened. For example, we may have already spent the last two years at Hope's Peak Academy, and our memories of that time were completely erased. It's even possible that we aren't the Ultimates at all, just random people who've been implanted with 16 years worth of- Can you go back? False memories! False memories. Yeah, but you don't skip the damn thing, you do that all the time! Though Kyoko's claim sounded ridiculous, her face was completely serious. She looked up at Mukuro once again. Which means I'm concerned the possibility that your crazy story is actually the truth. Yeah. No, that's all that room filling with silence thing really happened there with that burp. Yeah. Yeah, Chihiro just kinda let that out. <laughs> I don't I just picked Chihiro randomly. Sure. Randomly. Sure. Kyoko's declaration filled the room. Yeah, no, that was the declaration that filled the room with silence. She didn't let that 
I was about to say she didn't let out that silence. Oh. <laughs> mm. She didn't release the silence within. Mm. She didn't let that silence overwhelm her. Kyoko cut through it with her own words, like a fucking rebuttal showdown. Yep. Without evidence, all I can do is make hypotheses. That's why I want to hear what you have to say, Muguro. I have no intention of blindly believing what you're going to say, or what the self-proclaimed hacker who took over Monokuma said. She paused and lowered her eyes, then declared with powerful determination. Even so, I intend to come to a conclusion as fairly and as objectively as I can. But I can only do that if you trust me and tell me the truth. Kyoko's conviction was clear from her voice. Mukuro's eyes narrowed slightly, and a tapestry of emotions flashed across her face as she looked towards Kyoko. But when she opened her mouth, her expression and voice were completely devoid of emotion. That's right. I completely forgot. You were like that. Mukuro repeated this to herself softly, and then faced Kyoko and declared, That must be why Junko took care to erase more of your memories compared to the others. Very well. I'll tell you everything. And after Mukuro placed Makoto back on the bed, she began to mechanically tell a story. The story of a girl who wanted to fill the world with despair. The girl who only felt truly happy when she was filled with despair herself. A plan for despair that began two years ago, or perhaps even earlier than that. How the world was currently ruled by the despair itself. Mukuro provided a brief summary of everything she knew about the plan. That's why it sounded even more outrageous than Kyoko had expected. And through her story, Kyoko was able to learn the truth about herself, who she is, and why she came to the Academy. The fate of the Academy's real headmaster. Oh boy! Kyoko's father. As she listened to Mukuro's story, Kyoko remained silent the whole time. Her face went blank when she learned her father had died. Perhaps her memory loss and absurdity of the situation helped lessen the impact somewhat. But there was no guarantee Kyoko would even believe her story. After Mukuro finished speaking, Kyoko stayed silent. With her unrivaled mental prowess, she was able to listen to Mukuro's story without interrupting her or dismissing it as nonsense. <coughs> Mukuro continued, You don't have to believe me. After all, any pictures that could prove my story are with Junko. Oh, wait. M right. Mukuro continued, You don't have to believe me. After all, any pictures that could prove my story are with Junko. All I can do is talk. After she had said that, Mukuro silently walked towards the entrance to the nurse's office. When she arrived at the door, she spoke again without looking back. But even if you don't believe me, you still listen to everything I had to say. So, Kyoko, Chihiro, thank you. After apologizing in such a strange tone of voice, she turned to the bed where Makoto lay, breathing weakly. Make sure Makoto stays rested. When he wakes up, make sure you give him some sports drinks from the dining hall or, sports or supply room to drink. Uh, um, please. Of course, but what are you going to do now? Asked Kyoko. Mukuro straightened herself up. Despair. Hmm? I need to... I need to make Junko feel despair. Mukuro continued mumbling to herself as she opened the door. There's nothing else I can do. No. No, there is something you can do. Mukuro stopped walking as Kyoko spoke firmly. Regardless of whether Monokuma is really Junko Enoshima or Besiki Madarai, if you're dealing with him, you won't be able to lay a finger on Makoto. I don't fully trust you, but if you're really concerned for Makoto's life, I'm willing to work with you. Unlike Besek Bishiki, who's abandoned him already, right? I'm sorry, I don't really work well with others. Mukuro looked away, then bowed her head as she left the nurse's office. But, um, I'll do my best. The doors closed and Mukuro was gone. I'm sorry for involving you in something so dangerous, Chihiro. Yeah, she, yeah, Chihiro was just kind of in the background that whole time. Recording the entire conversation. As she continued to organize the vast amount of information that Mukuro gave her, Kyoko... Oh, yeah, they got it recorded, too. Mm -hmm. Kyoko turned, and they're going to have it on the laptop, and Junko doesn't know because he got rid of the fucking surveillance cameras. Yep. Holy shit. 
Kyoko turned to Chihiro who was still working on Monokuma. As she trembled with fear, Chihiro slowly looked back at Kyoko. Uh, um, Kyoko? About what Mukuro had said just now? Chihiro's face turned pale as he struggled with her words, and Kyoko tried to calm her down. We can't determine if anything she told us is true or not. There's no need to be afraid. But Chihiro shook her head and returned to the looking at her laptop. Monokuma. I... I think... she's telling the truth. What are you basing that on? Um... well... it looks like Monokuma is really being controlled from the outside. Part of Monokuma's system had been connected to Chihiro. Oh, part of the <laughs> part of the Monokuma system had been connected. She starts talking in third person about her laptop. Kyoko's just like, "Oh, Chihiro, what are you doing?" I've been possessed by robots. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, part of Monokuma's system had been had been connected to Shihiro's laptop, and she was analyzing the data from within its control system. And it had, and it was then that the ultimate programmer noticed something unusual about it. This control program. I thought it would be another year before the system became fully operational. Yeah, within two years' time, of course. Shihiro started trembling so much that she was unable to continue speaking. We can't confirm that said Kyoko, pro pro proposing another possibility to avoid jumping to conclusions. It's possible that a similar program was being developed in secret. But Chihiro adamantly shook her head and said, No, that's not it. It just looks really familiar to me. Kyoko looked over at Chihiro's trembling shoulders to peer at the screen, and that's when she noticed. This program... Chihiro, did you create this? All the ultimate programmer could do was nod weakly. Aw, shit, biscuit. Why that? Why is that the exclamation? Aw, shit, biscuit. Why is that the exclamation? The uh, first floor, main hall. Mukuro continued moving forward, and was fortunate enough not to encounter Sakura or Mondo. Oh, she'd beat the shit out of Mondo. <laughs> With no interference from anyone, she made her way to a hall as large as the gym, and stood before the sealed main entrance. Suddenly, Monokuma popped out from the shadows to block her path. Within this hall that resembled a nuclear bomb shelter, repeat, replete with all manner and he of heavy men- Monokuma's silhouette was conspicuously out of place here. His laughter rang throughout the room as he wiggled his body from side to side. SWING YOUR ARMS FROM SIDE TO SIDE! What was that? I didn't want to actually flick you, but I wanted to do the motion of flicking. <laughs> what are you doing at the nurse's office? Did you eliminate your rival from Makoto's affections? Or did you help play matchmaker instead? Either way, don't you think it's kind of adorable to put Makoto and Kyoko in this kind of situation together? If this is a true suspense film, those two would be the last couple standing. <laughs> but if this was a horror film, they'd just die anyway. That killer was alive all along. Splat goes the blood, plop goes the meat. I'm a huge fan of the endings where the characters think they're gonna live, and they're finally headed to the final destination. Death, final destination. Wait, what the hell's a destination? What does it even mean? Despite Monokuma's angry complaints, Mukuro remained unperturbed. She continued to stare icy daggers at Monokuma as if she was waiting for him to finish speaking. Well, well. Anyway, I'm just so sad right now. Our regulation-breaking delinquent is disrupting the harmony of this peaceful academy. I can't even keep one of my students from running wild. Time to say goodbye to your incompetent headmaster! I'm gonna use Monokuma Elu Evolution to become a big Magnum headmaster and mold you into a decent student. Since he said that Monokuma extended his claws and waddled towards Mukuro. So if I'm gonna mold you, then I gotta kill you first. 
Right as he finished speaking, Monokuma suddenly charged at, Mono at Mukuro like a spiked volleyball. But Mukuro was faster and dodged Monokuma's attack. She jumped back, keeping her distance from Monokuma, just in case his claws could extend even longer. Just then a shadowy figure appeared next to her. Mukuro twisted her body to its limits and just narrowly evaded the figure's attack. When she landed on the floor, she immediately saw... <laughs> so, what does, so, what does, what does the immortal, immortal killer want anyway? Are you, you going to tell, tell the others the truth, truth and escape without, without them? them? With them! Even, Even though, though you know, know what the outside, outside world is like right, right now? Two Monokumas were speaking to Mukuro in unison. Oh boy, that's going to be great to do in post. Honestly, I don't, I don't mind, mind if you do that. that. I can just imagine the look on everyone's face when you discover the truth. It fills me with such a heart, throbbing, and excitement! The two Monokumas continued to speak in stereo sound. Oh, thank you. Thank you, game, for giving me a lot more to work with. Stereo sound. Just one on each ear. Like fucking ASMR. Yes, <laughs> you destroyed my plans, but there's no happy ending waiting for you. No matter which route you take. You'll have yourself to blame for that. Don't tell me you thought they'd be grateful to you. Even if you guys escape here, you think they'll still forgive you when they get away with that nasty outside air? Some of them might prefer to stay in the school, and some of them might resent you for being kind and just showing them the truth. But then again, it's all your fault anyway, so it doesn't really matter what they think of you. Monokuma made a little mistake. Despite facing Two Monokumas, Moonkuro's expression didn't waver. Moonkuro? <laughs> <laughs> Moonkuro! Moonkuro's expression didn't waver. My favorite character is Moonkuro. <laughs> Moon is that like Desmond the Moon Bear? It's like, it's like a Moonkuro in Kusaba. Bear. She understood that controlling two Monokuma simultaneously was a piece of cake for Junko. Mukuro drew an arm's length metal bar from a seemingly nowhere and readied herself. She just had that shit crammed in her pocket like you do in every game. It was the remains of the IV stand from the nurse's office sharpened into a pointy My weapon. dumbass read that as the four stand. <laughs> the four stand, you know? With a weapon in hand. Mukuro responded in a cold, mechanical tone. That's fine. I'm already used to that. None of the fear none of the fear she felt when Monokuma suggested that Makoto would blame her appeared to her face. Her path was clear a to her. Appeared to her face? Her path was clear to her now! And she calmly issued her demands to Monokuma. Junko, open the gates. The shock of such a straightforward demand left both Monokumas momentarily speechless, but soon they replied, In stereo. Huh? Why? So we can all leave together. Another straightforward answer. Both Monokumas faced each other with began gesturing as if they were whispering to one another. Mukuro knew their movements were intended to mock her. Unmoved, she continued to speak to Junko directly. I think they'll understand if I show them the outside world. And then they stopped doubting Makoto. <clears throat> and then they'll stop doubting Makoto. You always find new ways to disappoint me, Mukuro. Do you forget why this school has an air infiltration system? Infiltration? <laughs> an air infiltration system. It's true that the outside air is polluted, but I don't think it'll kill us immediately. That's not Monokuma! <laughs> That's Mukuro with the air pollution. Yeah, that's Mukuro with the air pollution that she just has. She has the air she pollution. She's a jar of it. She's fucking. She's so disgusting and smelly that she just pollutes the air wherever she's around. Wherever she's around. <laughs> it's true. <clears throat> it's true that the air outside is polluted, but I don't think it'll kill us immediately. Besides, it's better than being trapped in the school and forced to kill each other. How can you be so sure the others will go along with you? You know what I mean, right? Before the former headmaster got turned into space dust, he interviewed the students and they all agreed they wanted to stay in the school. That was before their memories had even been erased. Do you really want to betray their wishes? Mukuro blinked and slowly stepped forward. 
I don't really care about their feelings. Huh? You're all I need, Junko. So don't worry. I'm always watching out for you. I'm going to make sure you feel despair. And I'm going to make Makoto and the others happy. If you want to revel in your own despair that badly, then I'll trust the hope Makoto gave me and take my chances with them instead of you. Mukuro's brief but powerful words caused the Monogumas to turn to talk to each other again. Oh my, this doesn't look good at all, Monokuma A. Eh? This child doesn't realize her own hypocrisy. She's so disappointed she's starting to make she's starting to reach critical mass, right, Monokuma B? You better put two Monokumas on the screen and label one A and one B and have them talk to each other. The two Monokumas looked at Mukuro, who seemed to be ready at who seemed ready at to destroy them, and said What, what do, do you, you think, think Monokuma C? C? Mukuro was taken aback by their question. But her instincts didn't be kicked in and she was immediately she immediately dodged away. At that moment a third Monokuma ex claws extended passed by where her head had previously been. This new Monokuma unit landed with several spins and faced Mukuro who had clung to the remains of a surveillance camera still attached to the ceiling. I agree with you both, Monokumas A and B! Of course you have to see now! The, the three Monokumas lined themselves up. To the students locked inside the academy, this sight would have been akin to a nightmare. One! <laughs> the three units began speaking in perfect harmony as their six eyes looked up at Mukuro. It's just the shining! The, so, no. <laughs> it's the shining with an extra Monokuma. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, they each jumped away in three separate directions and kicked off one of the walls. The path of each unit's triangular attack all converged to a single point. Mukuro, who was still clinging to the ceiling. She was surrounded by a razor sharp claws coming at her from different directions. But the situation wasn't even a nightmare to Mukuro. Compared to the time she fended off three assassins who had evaded her camp one night back when she was still a member of Fenrir, this was nothing. This thought crossed Mukuro's mind as she dangled from the ceiling with one hand and thrashed her limbs around like a tornado. Intercepted by this move, the Monokumas fell to the floor with a loud crash. Mukuro landed on the ground and chased after one of them, brain brandishing her metal bar. Suddenly, she stopped moving and took a huge leap back. One of the Monokumas exploded with a deafening roar. He had detonated the bond inside of himself in an attempt to make take Mukuro down with him. But thanks to her own defense battlefield instincts, Mukuro managed to avoid the explosion. She looked towards the hallway, expecting the explosion to have attracted the attention of Sakura and the others. But she didn't hear any footsteps approaching. Monogumma's voice rang from within the dense smoke. Oh, you don't, you don't have, have to worry. worry. I already, I already told, told the others to assemble, assemble in the cafeteria. cafeteria. They were eager to follow my orders after I told them I designed the poison gas, and in a special solution, it was time to get them. get them. I'm pretty, pretty sure Yoko and the others are all in the cafeteria right now. Or not. I'm, I'm sure, sure Makoto was with them too. too. Or not. I doubt Sakura would get too rough with them. But I'm sure the will be able to torture Makoto once he wakes up. When she listened to Monokuma's overlapping voices, Mukuro tilted her head slightly and asked, I'm pretty sure they're going to find out that you lied about that special police unit. Are you really okay with that? No! There's four of them now. There's five of them now. You It suddenly dawned on Mukuro. Not the reason why Monokuma didn't care if the students found out he lied, but rather that the voices of Monokumas in the smoke were gradually increasing in numbers. There's seven of them now. Eight? Wait. Two, four, six, eight, eight, ten. ten. There's ten Monokumas. I think you better book it. <laughs> As the smoke started to clear, the shadows of the three Monokumas appeared. The shadows of three Monokumas appeared. One that exploded. The one that exploded couldn't have been revived, so a new one must have come to take its place. But there's no way Mukuro had only heard three Monokumas talking just now. As if to prove her hearing had been accurate, the Monokumas suddenly made their move. Three Monokumas bent over and began twirling their upper bodies. From behind them, new Monokumas 
emerged like an after image is brought to life. So fucking double team. Yep. Just literal double team. This second row of Monokumas mimicked the earlier ones with one frame of delay, revealing even more Monokumas behind them. Eventually, Mukuro realized there were three rows containing ten Monokumas each. Thirty Monokumas! Good. <laughs> Brackets! Good. Good shit. Did you know this is more than Psycho Dance? Monokuma's 30 voices spoke in perfect harmony as they divulged information that had nothing to do with the current situation. Mukuro had already knew that multiple Monokumas were positioned throughout the academy, but only Junko knew how many Monokumas were actually existed. Mukuro had no way of knowing if these 30 Monokumas were part of a larger contingent, or if they were just tiny. Which I would assume, since it's Junko, this is not even that big. The flock of two-toned the flock of two-toned teddy bears continued to twirl around Mukuro felt like she was being bombarded with hypnotic images. But faced, but faced with this ab abnormal sight, the ultimate soldier remained calm and maintained her focus. She was nothing like the girl who had panicked earlier in the gym when Makoto was impaled. As she stood there before 30 emissaries of despair, she slowed her breathing and allowed her heart rate to accelerate. It was instinct, not, for, not fear or panic, that sent her blood racing throughout her body, speeding up the reaction time of her cells. As her senses sharpened, the Monokumas began speaking to her again. Don't worry! I'll make sure Makoto doesn't die! As long as everyone lives, I can reset their memories as many times as I want! <laughs> That's right! All your effort, hope, dreams, and determination are going right in the garbage heap! The Monokumas took turns speaking in groups of ten. As if the mastermind controlling the Monokumas wanted to show off their ability to manipulate them. However, the ultimate soldier knew what the true purpose behind all this was. She strained her ears to her limits and, and noticed a certain sound hidden among the Monokuma's voices. Mukuro's face remained pretty still as she kicked off the floor. The moment she moved to the side, a roaring sound struck the entrance hall. The ceiling-mounted turrets in front of the gates started raining bullets down on Mukuro. The Monokuma's were just the mastermind's decoy while she tried to blow her away. As if further trapping her, the Monokumas charged at Mukuro through the storm of bullets. Mukuro guessed the Mastermind programmed her movements in, the, in advance so they wouldn't get hit by a single bullet. She ran for the gates, evading waves of bullets and claws every step of the way. Programming 30 Monokumas and 2 turrets while also predicting Mukuro's escape route? This would be considered impossible for anyone, but Mukuro knew it was possible for Junko. As the ultimate despair, she possessed despair-inducing abilities that surpassed the capabilities of any normal human. Her display of power was only was only for filling Mukuro with despair. Despair. The scene playing out in front of Mukuro was brimming with despair. The adorably deadly Monokumas laughed and danced like reapers as bullets whizzed through the air. It was despair to the point of absurdity, and it was all for Mukuro. Just death blossoming everywhere, Monokumas. It's just spinning around literally with the reaper. <laughs> but in the presence of despair, Mukuro felt a strange serenity. For me? Junko's doing all this? For me? Junko, are you watching me right now? How? You broke all the fucking cameras. In the end, perhaps Mukuro really was a disappointment. She clenched her fists. Junko, thank you. The sound of gunfire overshadowed her whisper, and Mukuro fell completely silent. As a member of the Ultimate Despair, Mukuro's heart was filled with joy. Though she was filled with emotion, her eyes had lost their sparkle. Silence filled the air. Even the gunfire from the turret seemed to stop for a moment. But that was only an allusion to the one controlling Monokuma. Something strong enough to silence the gunfire and avoid being picked up by the sensors spread throughout the school and Mukuro, with Mukuro at the center. Ow. Make sure I do this right. With that, th with that final thought, she closed her mouth and turned off her emotions. As she ran through the waves of scorching bullets, the air around her began to grow colder. As this coolness spread into her heart, it began to beat in a mechanical fashion. Several seconds later, Mukuro's body and mind melded together and became one with her surroundings. Her temperature now dominated the battlefield. Despair, bullets, and monokumas filled the area. Mukuro predicted their movements and jumped it into the air without any hesitation. One of the Monokumas jumped at her, but she avoided his attack, kicked his body, and launched herself into midair. Bullets piercing through the space Mukuro was previously occupying, striking at the falling Monokuma right through its internal bomb. 
the impact of the bullet caused it to explode, sending fiery Monokuma parts everywhere. As she rode the blast wave, Mukuro balanced herself in midair and she kicked away two, three Monokumas. That Is she actually gonna pull this off? Her. She moved so gracefully that she was practically flying. In contrast, the Monokumas threw themselves into a path of oncoming bolts, exploding one after the other. Some of them exploded near the main entrance, but their blast didn't even leave a scratch. With full control over the entrance hall, Mukuro evaded bullets and confirmed that the bombs inside Monokumas weren't enough to destroy the door, but she refused to stop. Mukuro needed to get information on what she must do to escape the academy. She had no desire to kill Junko. Mukuro wanted to fill Junko with despair by instilling a hope into the future of Makoto and the other students. That was M Mukuro's ultimate goal. Get information. In contrast to her determination, her mouth stayed shut. But to this, but this does not mean that Mukuro was not currently speaking to Junko. The situation, this battle of death and destruction was a conversation of sorts for Mukuro. All she knew how to do was fight. She knew she wasn't interested in anything else. She thought she didn't need anything else. All Mukuro needed was to be a sword to fulfill her sister's desire for despair. That purpose alone was the crux of her existence, and she lived her entire life convincing herself that she couldn't do anything else. That's why power like was like a language to Mukuro. A battle to the death revealed more about her heart than mere words ever could. Her heart, her words were in the wind of savagery that blows across a battlefield uprooting others who also speak the language of violence. This was true even against her sister. When Junko would berate her sister, Mukuro couldn't talk back. All she could do was cower and apologize profusely. But it's different now. For the first time, Junko was actually using a language her sister could actually recognize. The child of despair who tore the world apart was speaking to her sister with the language of power. Mukuro's heart filled with joy. For that reason, she strengthened her focus on her conversation with Junko, and that emotion began to gradually disappear. On this frigid battlefield, Mukuro continued her heated conversation. Endless rounds of despair fired from the school's turrets, but Mukuro's words intercepted every last violent shot from the threats thre that threatened to shatter her body and mind in half. She quickly realized that the Monokumas hadn't decreased in numbers at all, no matter how many she kept destroying. Not only that, she noticed that more Monokumas had been joining the fray until there were nearly 50 of them for Mukuro oh my to fight. God. But Mukuro's resolve wouldn't break so easily. As she continued to wield her power, her heart began to fill with something that was neither hope nor despair. She learned despair from being abandoned by Junko, and she learned hope from her acts of violence. For Mukuro, who had no interest in this world, a small space in the front of the gate was a reflection of her life, a representation of her perfect world. This disappointing girl, filled with endless disappointment who knew no other way to live, continued her lonely dance. She surrendered herself to the rhythm of despair, which accompanies the music of hope. Damn!